Hey guys, Ivan here, and as you saw in the title of this video, we're gonna talk about the best abs in modern bodybuilding. Now, when I say modern bodybuilding, I'm gonna be focusing on today's era, at least from this millennium, but I will be mentioning some bodybuilders from the 90s, since 1993, since that is the official year of the start of mass monster era. So, let's begin with our competitor number one, Rolly Winkler. A good, developed and symmetrical midsection is definitely not a priority, not a focus of modern bodybuilders, since it's been overlooked by the judges for the past two decades or so, probably three decades. In order to develop huge back, legs, arms and everything else, bodybuilders have stopped paying attention to a proper midsection, so it is very rare thing these days. A good developed midsection with the developed and visible abs that truly make a physique stand out, actually. It may not grant you a bunch of points if you're doing a bodybuilding competition, but it will definitely be a focus of everybody's eyes. So back to Rolly Winkler. This was his 2012 shape, where he was significantly smaller than he is today, but his abs were absolutely phenomenal. They were shredded, they were developed, they were pretty symmetrical, and they were actually visible, which is a rarity these days. I'm sure many of you are wondering how did Rolly make this list, because he was truly known for having a bubble gut back in the day, but he fixed the issue. On the left here you can see Rolly at 2015 Iron Classic, with a huge distended bubble gut, and on the right you can see his Iron Classic Australia 2019, this year, earlier this year, with somewhat of a vacuum. He just sucked his stomach in a little bit. I don't know if you can call this vacuum, but uh, what is vacuum than a sucked in stomach? So how much should it be sucked in? That's the question, but uh, it is some variation, a small minor vacuum. So Rolly's Smith section is uh, telling you a comeback story. But even if that never happened, these abs are pretty developed and are looking pretty aesthetic, wouldn't you say so? This was him in 2018 Mr. Olympia where he placed third, but these days, today, it's really a rare thing to see Rolly with these kind of apps, because he doesn't nail the conditioning every time. But when he is conditioned, his apps look great. But I would rather focus on his 2012 New York Pro shape, because back then he was smaller, so he was more conditioned. And when you see this physique, you will definitely check his arms, his legs and everything, but the main focus, uh, what my eyes are drawn to, is actually his midsection. So, very good abs of Rollo Winkler. Since we are mentioning 2018 Mr. Olympia, let's mention the winner and the loser of it. Phil Heath lost his title right here and Sean won it, Sean Roden. Here you can notice that Phil's midsection looks horrible, just a big mess. And Sean's midsection looks much better, far better. Many people, counting myself, think that that's the reason why Phil lost. But even though Sean's midsection was far better than Phil's, and it was pretty developed, I wouldn't call his midsection one of the best of modern bodybuilding. God, look at this pose right here, so detailed, so full. Wow, but uh, here you can see, here you can see what I'm talking about, the lower abs are distended. Here you can see it as well. As he grew more muscle, that lower part of his abdomen grew. It looks like he swallowed a ball or something. And not only that it was small and little, but uh, it seemed kind of blurry, that lower region, because it was blown up so much, you couldn't really see the definition. So no, I wouldn't count Sean as one of the people with the best midsection in modern bodybuilding. But however, when he was younger, it looked much better, his waist was smaller, and his abs were more prominent, but his belly button was always popping out like this. So that throws me away, because it doesn't look very aesthetic. And that's all that matters about abs. You don't need abs to be huge and developed, abs are supposed to look aesthetic, and uh, because of this belly button, they don't really look that aesthetic, so no, I wouldn't count Sean Rodin in. Alright, now let's rewind back a little bit, this is still 2000s, this is this millennium, and we have Jay Cutler next. Now Jay Cutler didn't have the best bone structure, he was a little bit too wide to the waist, people call him Jay Cutler the fridge, <laughs> but uh, still, his abs looked very aesthetic to me. They weren't symmetrical. They remind me of Windows operating system, the, the logo, the Windows. Th that's how they looked like. But uh, they looked amazing because uh, the stomach was flat and there was really low body fat. 
and uh, the separation between those uh, ab muscles was very deep. And that's not something everybody has nowadays or back then. So potentially his abs, his midsection, can be the best midsection of modern bodybuilding. But we'll see about that in a couple of other examples. We compared them to, to Jay Cutler, but uh, I really liked his midsection. His abs were phenomenal, if you ask me. Back in the day, for example, 2001, his waist wasn't really that wide. Is it because the other body parts were bigger or something else? I don't know, but the waist wasn't that big, wasn't that wide, and the abs looked amazing, even when his stomach wasn't flexed, like here in this front double bicep. He's not hitting the vacuum, but he sucked the stomach in a little, and you can still see the separation of all the abs that he had. Obviously, he was chasing Ronnie Coleman, so he needed to grow much more, and when he grew, his waist got bigger, so his midsection wasn't looking that aesthetic. But hey, he did what he had to do to become the best bodybuilder in the world, which he was four years, four times. By the way, here in this photo, his abs remind me of the abs of one modern bodybuilder who is competing right now, currently, who is active. Can you guess who? Yeah, Regan Grimes. Regan is a youngster, he's a very young guy, he's just coming up, but he does have a phenomenal set of abs. Hopefully, he will get bigger and keep this kind of a waistline. Here you can see Max Charles on the right and Cedric McMillan on the left, and these guys do not have good midsections. There is a bunch of veins on Max Charles' stomach, and Cedric, you cannot even count properly his abs. So, what's going on there? I don't know, why is that happening with modern bodybuilders? But Regan is holding his own. Yeah, he's young and he's a little bit smaller than the other guys. Hopefully, once he gets bigger, he will actually keep these kind of abs. Anyways, back to Jay. So, once Jay got bigger, he got also more conditioned. For example, right here, 2009 Mr. Olympia. So, even though his waist was bigger and uh, his limbs weren't as big, so you get the idea why some people call him the fridge, you can still see that uh, his abs looked good, looked good. No, the waist wasn't small, but the abs themselves looked pretty decent. And uh, you're wondering, is he having those abs right now, even today? Hell yeah, hell yeah he does. When Milo Sharchev asked him, do you still have abs, he answered, always. So they took another photo, pretty much just like the one they took back then when they were younger. Alright, so Milo Sharchev, he definitely does have one of the best midsections uh, of all time. And he was competing to the 90s and even a little bit in the 2000s. So here you can see that he had a fully developed midsection, small waist, and probably one of the most aesthetic physiques of all time, especially of the 90s and 2000s, if you can count them in. Now, he didn't have a, an 8-pack or something, his abs weren't super developed, but his waist was small and it definitely looked very, very aesthetic. So if you're talking about the abs and the aesthetics in bodybuilding, you definitely must mention uh, Milo Sharcha right here, the mind. Before Jay Cutler won that 2009 Mr. Olympia, he lost it to this gentleman right here on the right, Daxter Jackson in 2008. And here you can see his midsection. It wasn't bad, it was very symmetrical, but it always had a little bit of a pop in the bottom part, so that's why I didn't like it. And later on, in his older years, because this guy is very old, he didn't quite look that aesthetic. Phil Heath never was known for, for a good midsection. His waist was small when he was younger, but later on it got uh, bigger and his abs looked even worse. The year before Jay Cutler lost the title, he won it against Victor Martinez. It was a controversial Mr. Olympia, a controversial win. Most people thought that Victor deserved the victory. And uh, this was 2007, and Victor was a little bit more conditioned, but you would not be able to see that through the stomach. For some reason, his lower abs just had a, a film of probably water, it probably wasn't fat, and he always had some sort of a wrinkle in the bottom part of his midsection. His physique overall was very, very aesthetic. Very aesthetic, but that bottom part of his abs had this little wrinkle, and his abs were never properly peeled. They always seemed a little bit watery, so I do not like his abs very much. We gotta make a couple of mentions of the other 90s bodybuilders, like Lee Priest right here. Lee Priest had a solid midsection, nothing special on the stage, but in his gym shots, it looked pretty good. Flex Wheeler had an amazing aesthetic physique, he was so symmetrical and his abs were fully developed, 
it was a proper 8 pack right here. But I get the impression that uh, Flex didn't really appreciate his abs too much. He never took it as an advantage. He never really uh, pointed out that he had an amazing set of abs. I don't think he really trained them that much. He was very aesthetic, very classic, but he was competing against guys like Dorian and then Ronnie, who were mass monsters. So he was trying to grow just like them. So he grew his, his arms, his back, his chest, his legs, but his midsection uh, took a hit because of that. And later on in his career, it didn't look that good, but back in the day, in 1993, for example, it looked very good. Sean Ray, on the contrary, didn't care who he was competing against. He wouldn't get bigger, even though the judges were telling him, basically, get bigger, you can't come the same. You can't come the same just conditioned. You need to grow, you need to grow, but he didn't care about it. He came the best way that he thought was, which apparently wasn't the best way. So he never won the Mr. Olympia. Like he could have a couple of times. He was really good, but just a little bit smaller than the other guys. But hey, he kept an amazing midsection. And that is the point of this video. So Sean Ray, another great midsection, great set of abs in modern bodybuilding. I call 90s modern bodybuilding, but it was 20, 30 years ago. And right now, in today's modern bodybuilding, right here, Michael Lockett, one of the guys who have a decent midsection, small waist. What's up with that right leg though? It seems much smaller than the left one. Probably not the best photo of him. Let me show you this one. So here you can see. Very interesting physique. Very freaky, freaky looking, like cartoonish physique. Very good chest and abs and arms, but the back is not that good and the legs are not very good. So on the stage, on a bodybuilding competition, he doesn't do that well. He is a pro winner. He won Chicago Pro this year and he qualified for the Mr. Olympia but he's not exactly a top 10 Mr. Olympia material. Now, here you can see his abs are developed, symmetrical, quite symmetrical, not that much, but pretty good abs, pretty good abs, pretty deeply separated, and uh, a guy who stands out because of his aesthetics and small waist. What about Hari Chopin? Well, as you can notice, in today's modern bodybuilding, not many people have developed abs, and uh, at uh, Vancouver Pro earlier this year, Hari definitely made an impact on the bodybuilding industry, Everybody knew that he was special, that he was huge, that he was a really good bodybuilder, but nobody really saw him uh, compared to the top guys, not recently, until he came to the Vancouver Pro and he blew the competition away, he destroyed Nathan Diasha. Here you can see him hitting the vacuum with all the mass that he has. Pretty powerful and developed midsection, but not very aesthetic. It is a little bit blown up. The photos are not exactly doing him any justice, uh, you need to see the video to see how his abs are actually looking because uh, the photos are probably not taken at the moment when he flexed his abs fully and when he sucked his stomach in. So here it's a little bit blown up, but uh, his abs were good. They were definitely focus of attention when he was on that stage. Not super aesthetic by any means, but for modern bodybuilding, this is pretty good actually. I also need to make an honorable mention of Boston Lloyd right here. I don't know how he did it, but uh, his ab is looking bigger than his chest. I don't know how is this even possible. Is it genetic or something else? It's it's very weird. It creeps me out. Compare the size of your ab to your chest. Is it even close? <laughs> Definitely not. I know he tore his, uh, his right back, but the left one doesn't seem that large either compared to his uh, ab or abs. So definitely weird thing that goes on right here, but uh, <laughs> definitely worthy of an honorable mention. And for the end of this video, let's mention our current Mr. Olympia champion, Brandon Curry whose abs are very symmetrical, very symmetrical, but not very deeply separated, not very conditioned. I picked this Iron Classic photo because he was smaller than he was at the Mr. Olympia, but he was more conditioned. Pretty much the same size, just better conditioning. And even here, his abs weren't as prominent. The waist was small, there was no bubble gut, but the abs weren't prominent, and it didn't matter. The judging system doesn't work that way, the judges don't care about having prominent abs. But it doesn't matter, uh, this is basically it. This is all the modern bodybuilders who are worthy mentioning them because of their abs. So what do you guys think? I'm sure I forgot somebody. If I have, let me know in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed it, then please subscribe for more bodybuilding videos. Thank you very much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.